All right, this video is going to talk about how to program the microcontrollers using the C language. And we'll go through some examples of those. So, let's start off with an example. We want to write a program that makes all of the pins of port A um, high. So we want to have five volts um, the output to all the pins of port A. So we see here, uh, these are pins 32 through 40, um, 33 through 40. And we want to have five volts on all of these. So it would be five volts relative to ground. And we can write a program to do that. So first of all, remember we need to set the data direction register for port A. So if we want those pins to be outputs, then we need uh, ones for all the bits. And then once they're output, we can either set them to high voltage or low voltage by writing to the port A register, either ones or zeros. So for all these to be outputs and all of them to be high, we want ones to DDRA and ones to port A. So that would be either 255 in decimal or hex FF, or just a bunch of ones in binary. So here's the entire program. Um, we have we have to include avrio.h. And then our program starts with the main function. This is where execution is going to start. And here's our lines of code. All right. So we have the DDRA register. We don't need to declare this variable. This is already um, defined in the compiler. So whenever we include io.h, then that uh, let's the compiler know what DDRA means, and the same with port A. So these are already defined, so we can go ahead and just write variables to them. We don't need to uh, declare these variables. We can write values to them. We can assign hex FF to DDRA. So that's what we've done here. We set DDRA to eight ones, and then port A, we assign hex FF to that. So now port A is eight ones. And now after this line, we have five volts on all these bits. And then we have this while loop that never ends, so while true, and then um, if we had any code to execute, we would have brackets here, but you can just put a semicolon and it'll never leave that line. <laughs> and the reason we do that is because for a microcontroller, it's always inside of, it's always operating in a while loop. Um, for the microcontroller to get here to return would be an undefined state. So microcontrollers are different from Microcontroller programs are different from programs you've written on the PC where they return. A microcontroller program is never going to return from main. Here's another example. We want to um, just have the pins of port B um, oscillate between two values. So they're all going to be outputs. And we want some of them to be on, some to be off. And we'll, every 10 milliseconds, we'll change that pattern. So we've got a, a little bit different uh, information here than the previous uh, slide. So now we've, we're including this delay.h header file, and that's so that we can use this function, delay ms. So that gives us some millisecond number uh, of delays. So whenever the program executes, see we've got our infinite while loop here. Um, we're going to set port b to a value, and then when it gets to this, the program's just going to sit here for 10 milliseconds, and then it'll go to the next line. So in order to have this nice little delay function, we've got to include delay.h. And one thing delay.h needs is uh, a value for the frequency of the processor. And so that's what this is. We're defining or we're, we're saying the value of this uh, variable is 8 million. So this is 8 million unsigned long. So that's just a data type. And 8 million is the uh, frequency of the built-in processor or built-in oscillator. So now that we know what these uh, pound define and pound includes are for, we'll look at main. So again, all the pins on port B are output, so that's what this line is for. So DDRB is eight ones after this. We get into our while loop, and then port B has this pattern now. So uh, pin seven of port B is off or is low voltage, pin Six of port B is high voltage, low voltage, high voltage, low, high. And that's because we've written to the port B register. 
then it delays for 10 milliseconds. And then we write, we assign this value to the port view register. And so this in hex is this in binary. So now we've just changed all the pins that were at low voltage to high voltage and all the pins that were at high voltage to low voltage. So the pins are just going back and forth between high voltage and low voltage every 10 milliseconds. So that's all this program does. But you can see that we've uh, written code that is going to change the voltage on the output to this microcontroller. And the way we do that is the data direction register to make an output and then the port register to uh, assign the value of high voltage or low voltage. Here's another example. We have this seven segment LED. So this is seven LEDs uh, configured in the figure eight and they're connected to the port C register. So we'll say that we have this LED connected to port C pin zero, this one's connected to port C pin one, et cetera. And we want to display the number one so that means that we need, uh, if this is a common cathode LED, which we'll assume it is, then these are going to be on whenever uh, that corresponding pin is at high voltage. And these will be off when the corresponding pin is at low voltage. So we need port C pin 1 to be high, port C pin 2 to be high, and the other pins on port C to be low. And they're all output because they're connected to this display. So the data is going out. It's not coming in. So we need to configure all the pins to be output. And we need just these two to be high voltage. So we need DDRC to be one for output. And port C has this pattern. So it would be uh, zero three in hex. I'm sorry, zero five. No, zero six. Okay. So zero six in hex. Um, right. So this is uh, port C pin zero, pin one, and pin two. So all these are low voltage and these two are high. So the program is. Uh, Similar to what we saw before, so we set uh, port C to be output by writing, assigning this value to data direction register C, and then we make these two pins high voltage and the other pins low voltage. Now, if we wanted to put a different pattern on the seven segment LED, we just need to have uh, different pins set to high and low. So now, the zero, one, two, three, and six, all those pins are all need to be high. The four and five need to be low. So this is the pattern we need to assign to the port C register to get those five pins to be high voltage and turn on these five LEDs. And here's the code. So again, all the pins are output and now we have different value um, to the port C register. So pin zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, and then four, five, six. This slide shows the different data types uh, available. And so some tips, use unsigned whenever possible. So if you're just doing something with a counter and you know, you're never gonna count negative instances, um, you know, your, your counter is always gonna be positive values, use an unsigned variable. And you wanna use the smallest data type you can to preserve memory and make operations faster. So you can use a car instead of an int if you don't need to count above 255. But you do have to be careful uh, because sometimes if you do assign it to a car, um, you might count over 55 in an instance you hadn't thought of. And so this slide is wrong. Uh, well, it was right and I changed it and now it's wrong. Uh, because in the ABR uh, 18 mega microcontrollers, there's no difference in a float data type and a double data type. So in on your computer, a uh, double would be 64-bit like shown here, but in the microcontroller, it's still 32-bit. So if you need floating point math, you can use a float. Now, what if we want to read data into the microcontroller? We haven't done examples of that yet. So these next two slides, we'll talk about uh, using pins as input. Um, in this example, we get the data at the pins of port C, and then we want to manipulate that data and send send it to, out to port B. So port C, all those pins are configured as inputs. Port B, they're all configured as outputs. So that's what these first two lines do. B, um, we've written ones to all the bits of DDRB, so that makes all the pins 
outputs. And we've written zeros to all the bits of DDRC. So that makes all these pins inputs. And we've here's our infinite while loop. And uh, here's our variable temp. It's an 8-bit variable. Um, we don't need more than that because pin C is an 8-bit register. So pin C is where the values uh, of the pins are stored. So uh, port C is input pins. So this register, pin C, has the values of whether those pins are at high voltage or low voltage. So if we connect a 5-volt power supply to port C pin 3, and all the others are connected to ground, then uh, the pin C register will have a 1 in bit 3 and zeros in all the other bits. And that number is assigned to the variable temp. And then we want to add 5 to that for some reason. And then we assign that bit new value to the variable uh, or to the port B register. And so in the previous example, bit 3 had a 1. Um, and so now when we add 5 to that, uh, so bit 3 is 8. And now we're adding 5, which is a 1 at bit 0 and at bit 2. So now port B has 1s at 0, uh, 2, and 3. And then all the other pins of port B are, are 0. So I'm sorry, all the other pins are low because all the other bits of port B are 0. And this little comment just shows that um, whenever we're working with these 8-bit numbers, if, if something rolls over, so for example, if pin C was all uh, ones, so if we had high voltage at all five, or I'm sorry, at all eight of the port C pins, then temp would be zero hex or hex FF. And then if we added five to that, well, that would require nine bits of data. And so that ninth bit is just truncated. And what we end up with would be uh, hex 04. So just another um, point to be conscious of uh, what happens, you know, what can happen when you're using these small uh, data types. And then finally, we're going to look at the pull up resistor. So, in general, what a pull up resistor does. Okay. So whenever we're using a pin as input, we'll call that this uh, blue box here. So that's where um, pin N of uh, port X, that value would be uh, stored, you know, if it's high voltage or low voltage. And um, So if we had, um, if we didn't have this pull-up resistor here, so if this was open, like shown in the figure, then um, the voltage at the PIN register would just be whatever voltage is here. But um, so if we were to just have a five volt power supply and we connected it to this, then that, then this would be a one because it'd be a high voltage. But then if we took the power supply away, and this wasn't connected to anything, we would want this to be a zero, but we can't be sure of that because it would be a floating voltage. Um, so this always needs to be in a known state. So it needs to be there either at ground or uh, at a high voltage. And so what the internal pull-up resistor does is it, it supplies it or connects it to a known voltage. So if we use the internal pull-up resistor, then this is closed. And so this is always going to be a one because it's always connected to VCC. And then would to get this to change state, we would connect this to ground. And we'll talk about this uh, whenever we meet. And so we'll um, look at this concept a little bit more. But I just wanted to introduce it now. And the way that we can decide whether or not to use the internal pull-up resistor is with the port X register if the pin is input. So more on that later.